Lighting is the basis of every virtual scene. While the 3D geometry defines the shape of your content, lighting defines colors and the final look of your scene. Unigen features both static and dynamic lighting. You can find the list of all available light sources by clicking Create, then Light in the main menu. In this tutorial, we will consider only the first three as the last one, the Environment Probe. Being a more complex solution for dynamic and static lighting and reflections is the subject of a separate tutorial. Let's start with the Omnidirectional Light Source. In the Creation Mode, you can snap a new object to any surface by dragging it with the mouse and adjust the distance to it with the mouse wheel. Confirm creation with a left click. The Omni Light Source is a point-emitting light in all directions, and realistically reproducing shadow cast, it also affects shading of transparent surfaces and particles. It can be used to simulate the sources with a bright center and equal roll-off of intensity. Unigen provides several groups of settings for fine-tuning of each light source object. Let's have a look at the most commonly used parameters. First group is the general parameters. It includes masks, light color, and its primary intensity. Attenuation distance and power are used to limit light distribution. We can simulate various area lights by changing their shape. You can see how the specular highlight is changing depending on the shape of the light source and the roughness of the surface. There are four simple shapes supported allowing us to create various interior and outdoor lights, such as light bulbs, office ceiling lamps, fluorescent lights, and so on. OmniLight lets us use a cube map texture for projection. It is a simple way to emulate multiple light sources and change lighting for the affected scene area with no extra performance cost. The last two groups of parameters are used to adjust settings of shadow simulation. The Omni Light Source uses shadow mapping technique controlled by shadow map resolution, biases, and softness. Please note that as Omni Light uses cube map modulation, it requires six passes to build shadows, so it can be pretty expensive and cause a performance hit. The next light source is the projected light that emits light from a single point in a cone shape oriented in a specific direction. It has almost the same common parameters as the Omni light except for several unique ones, such as the field of view. This parameter defines the angle of the light cone and the penumbra. This parameter defines the edge falloff of the light spot. Using the projected light, we can create a textured spotlight or project an image onto a surface. Unlike the Omni light, it requires only a single 2D texture to be used for projection. By assigning a certain texture, we can easily get the results similar to a light with an IES profile assigned. Projected lights also produce shadows with accurate perspective projection, but they require only a single rendering pass which makes them more performance friendly than Omni lights. The third type of light source we are going to consider is the world light. It provides a realistic simulation of sunlight and represents an infinitely remote light source which casts orthographically projected beams onto the scene. We can use this type of light source in interior scenes to simulate the sunlight coming through windows. In outdoor scenes, it is supposed to be used as the primary light. We can easily set the time of day by changing the world light source orientation. We can imitate sunlight and moonlight by setting the corresponding scattering type, or we can just disable it. The world light source uses parallel split shadow mapping for shadow simulation. It is an advanced shadow mapping technique splitting the view frustrum into several cascades by depth for optimization purposes. The shadow map with higher resolution will be used for the cascade closest to the viewer and the ones with the lower resolutions for more distant cascades. By default, the number of cascades is set to 4. By setting cascade border parameters, we can adjust distance to each cascade. We can see smooth, linear interpolation between the cascades of shadow maps of different quality. Choose Rendering then Shadow Cascades in the main menu to enable visualization of this technique. This technique makes it possible to realistically illuminate huge scenes while keeping the performance high.
Unigen offers the Screen Space Shadows feature. You can enable it by selecting Rendering Shadows in the main menu. This feature enables simulation of ray trace shadows using the information from the screen depth buffer. It can capture details too small for traditional shadow mapping. So here we can adjust the set of ray tracing parameters including the number of rays, steps, step size, etc. and find the balance between quality and performance. By combining both types of shadows, we can avoid even small shading artifacts and significantly improve the look of our scene. The World Light Source also supports screen space shadows, which makes it possible to avoid performance hits when rendering heavy scenes, as calculations are made in the screen space. Making all these light sources work together requires some practice, but the well-tuned results are likely to be beautiful and realistic.